The 1930s were a tumultuous time in Australia. World War I had left humans destroyed physically, mentally and spiritually. Many grieved for the service people who'd lost their lives in the war, suffered through major health crises due to the Spanish flu and experienced economic and social hardship brought on by the Great Depression. The human body became symbolic of growth and recovery and the government felt it was imperative to place funds towards developing facilities around fitness through bathing to encourage people to re-engage with society. They aimed to establish a cultural identity representative of freedom and a healthy outdoors lifestyle. Internationally, Australia appeared modern, progressive and healthy, which boosted tourism. Health and connection to the body was a central tenant of modernism. Images of the healthy body became ubiquitous in the mainstream media and extended to art. The government realised the camera could be used as a tool to sway propaganda and promote their own view of the perfect body. They realised photographers, excited about their new limitless possibilities, could be influenced to assist this change. Max Dupain was at the forefront of modernism. He once said, I now realise the breathtaking possibilities of this new machine and that the modern camera could revolutionise the world's culture. Dupain's photographic explorations included influences from Dada and surrealist photography movements, which were prevalent overseas. A quote from Artsets states, It was not until Max Dupain started experimenting with and writing about photography that a uniquely Australian mode of modernism began to take shape. Contrasting Dupain is contemporary photographer Jeff Carter. A self-taught photographer, Carter established his own characteristic style. His work in journalism provided him with the profound ability to capture just a moment in time often contrasting human subjects with the harsh environments in which they lived. He wanted to capture the true Australia and reveal the real and raw. There was no glamour, no ideal body. Carter captured all Australians, including Indigenous Australians. Through his photography, he gave a voice to the underprivileged. Carter described himself as the photographer for the poor and the unknown. Max Dupain was born in Sydney in 1911 and died in 1992. He was not academically inclined and never finished school. In the late 1920s, he secured a three-year apprenticeship with photographer Cecil Bostock whilst attending night art classes. Dupain began his own photographic studio in 1934. The Bauhaus movement overseas meant photography became an art form. Max Dupain drew on the latest photographic ideas and styles. His images became sharp he experimented with perspective and used light to create strong contrast. His compositions were in stark contrast to the soft focused nostalgic and romantic norms of the time. According to Dupain, his photographic philosophy could be explained using two words, simplicity and directness. To gain insight into Max's fascination with photographing the human form, we must look to the strong influence his father had. George Zephyrin Dupain was the main instigator for physical education and training in Australia, although his contribution is still undervalued today. George held strong beliefs in eugenics, Darwinism and selective breeding to maintain a white Australia, which is rather ironic because George's background is actually French. Jeff Carter was born in Melbourne in 1928. At a young age, Carter enjoyed hiding in the back of delivery vans as a way of getting home from school. Often, he would stay in the vans and venture to new places rather than return home. Carter soon realised that writing, photography and travelling were his passions and sold his first fictional story whilst still at school. These days, I'm quite often, if I say a few words, in the exhibition, I usually sort of say, I'm here in the false pretenses because really, uh, people who should be here and getting the credit for the people allowing me to realise to take these photographs. Max Dupain embraced modernism. 
He had an interest in body culture and how the health, vitality and fitness that contributed to the classical ideal body juxtaposed against a body corrupted by the indulgences and extravagances of modern life. One of Max's aims was to photograph the naked body and shape it to emulate the great marble sculptures of the past that depicted what a perfect body should look like. It is also worth noting that Dupain often captured progressive images out of step with traditional notions of femininity at the time. A good example of this is the photograph of Roberta Yardley in Cronulla. Her legs have well-defined muscle, almost masculine-like. In some of his images, it seems Dupain expressed his inner turmoil through his work. His photograph, Discus Thrower 3, Man with Open Arms, appears reminiscent of the imposing figure of the famous Disco Bolus, Discus Thrower Sculptor. However, there are subtle differences. For example, in Dupain's photograph, the discus is in the subject's left hand, perhaps conjuring ideas of breaking free from society norms. The subject is looking at the horizon and could be close to the release point as if about to break free. Contour lines showing the human form in Untitled is synonymous with modernist photography. However, the composition was solarized, a process where the tone of a photograph is reversed by re-exposing the photograph to light when developing. Is this symbolic of Dupain feeling exposed or overexposed? It is unclear whether there is some hidden meaning to this. Another aspect of modernist photography was the creative use of light and dramatic use of contrast. Some of Dupain's examples using these techniques can be seen in his Nudes with Lights on Fingers, works from the 1930s. Dupain experimented with playful geometric compositions. In Bondi Beach Symmetry, his subjects are aligned in many different directions around an unoccupied central circle of sand, yet there is a sense of balance across the whole image. He was a great surfer. He'd just come out of the surf and flopped down on the beach, which is a very characteristic Australian uh, way of life. I think I only took two shots of that. The low view, of course, gives it this monumental form. And uh, this, this has been around all over the world, and uh, I suppose it's, it's looked at as a symbol of the uh, Australian way of life, which of course it isn't. Although the Sunbaker is probably Dupain's most famous photograph, Dupain did not like this image. Dupain much preferred the alternative image he took. This is where the subject's body was filled with tension. We see here his hands are clasped together. The emotion in this image is more withdrawn, sullen and moody. It does raise the question whether society has projected their own ideas not only about Dupain's work, but from this, it appears the government succeeded in using photographers to enable a certain body culture for their own agendas. When Dupain was asked what his favourite photograph was, he answered Meat Q, as it portrayed food rationing in society and the difficult times during the Great Depression. Or so we thought. In fact, the truth behind this image is quite comical. Meat Q, of course, is um, one of his better known images. He was standing there watching these old biddies as he called them and one woman came in apparently and broke into the queue and this the woman on her on her left is looking around as if to say what you know what do you, what do you think you're doing this one's ignoring it because it wasn't the you know didn't want to cause a fuss and this one's got such a, um, a, a sort of a sullen angry look on her face. If we were to compare Dupain's work with Carter's, we see that Jeff Carter has a sense of freedom and spontaneity that Dupain fought to capture throughout his career. While Dupain fought to convey the real world, it didn't seem to come as naturally for him as it did for Carter. Carter's photographs are less stylized and naturally lyrical. Every photograph Carter captured told a long story. The 1930s were a tumultuous time in Australia. Health and its connection to body was a central tenant of modernism and photographers like Max Dupain tried to capture the human body in stylized, aesthetic beauty. Contemporary photographer Jeff Carter, on the other hand, was more interested in the poor and unknown. I, I sort of feel that 
people that made this, this country were the sheep farmers and the wheat farmers and, and, the, and the outback people of, of all sorts, and I don't think they get the recognition that they, they deserve.